In this episode of the Discourse of Human Events, we spoil all your favorite shows. We talk about the recent Westworld a lot. We dive into Lost and our opinions on the show as a whole. We talk about The Wire, Deadwood, Last Airbender, Walking Dead. We touch on Mr. Robot and Archer, Breaking Bad, No Country for Old Men we randomly get into. And of course, we talk about Rick and Morty, which I can't wait for the third season. Uh, So enjoy. Everything's okay, I'm just trying to act my age Yeah, I wanna know Human Events episode 44 with Cody. Hello. It's been a while. Yes, it has. So you're wanting to talk about Westworld. Did you just you just finish it, right? Uh, I finished it about a month ago. About I watched. Ago? I pretty much watched it when it was released. So first off, just overall view. Did you, did you like it overall? Yeah, it's robots fucking humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am DB reading. What, what would you give it? Oh, it's up there. Uh, probably like a nine. Do you see? I feel like it's overrated. Really? Yeah, I would give it a solid seven, but did, a nine. Did you see? It's too predictable. Did you? Pre- yeah. Did you predict everything? Okay. Spoiler alert for anybody who's watching. Don't listen to this podcast because we're going to spoil everything. But okay, so I predicted all, everything except mm-hmm. for that there was the time difference. Okay. But I didn't predict the time difference because there was really fucking confusing show. Like, mm-hmm. there was times when I was watching, I was like, I I really don't understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they just tricked the audience by being confusing, so it really wasn't much So you didn't review. know that William was the man in black? Correct. Okay. So... I kept up on it, and then about, like, three or four episodes in, I started reading Reddit, and Reddit mm-hmm. pretty much is... They just predict everything. Yeah, right, it's on. They'll just throw everything out there, and then I'll cave in on one theory and be like, oh, that makes so much sense. Like, yeah, here's evidence like- here, and here's <laughs> evidence here, and here's, like, a subtle yeah. hint. Yep, you, they can't do too much foreshadowing, or Reddit will get it. Right. So, after I saw that, I was like, yeah, that's probably possible, and then, like, the more, season, the more seasons that came out... Yeah. Like, the more it was apparent that there's two different timelines, and that William probably is the man in black... Mm-hmm. And the whole Arnold being Bernard thing, though, yeah, that was uh, that was kind of surprising. Really, I thought that was the most obvious thing because you're you're watching a movie about humans and robots, so naturally one of these storylines <clears throat> is going to be either a robot, it, somebody you think is a robot is actually a human, or somebody who's a human is actually a robot. You True. know that's going to happen. Yeah, and he was like the most obvious one because it's like. Well, he's the one that tests to see if robots are robots and improves the robots, so it would be really cool if he was actually a robot. That's true. So that's what I thought was way too predictable. But then by the end of it, you're like, anybody could be a robot. Like, even, um, who was the, who was Anthony Hopkins? Yeah, that was what I thought Dr. Was Ford? Happen. Even he, he like, could have sent a robot version of him out to get killed, and he could still be alive. That's... That's where I thought the ending was going. Yeah. I was like, I think Anthony Hopkins is going to also end up being a robot. And what's what was his name? Dr. Ford. Dr. Ford. It, he's actually just alive somewhere else. Yeah. Not doing anything. Yeah. It was it was a crazy ride. It was, it was entertaining, though. It, that's why I give it a 7. I mean, that's a pretty good score. The whole idea life. of, like, this giant park where you can pretty much do anything and, like... It's basically like a giant Grand Theft Auto game. Okay. My other huge issue, though, is the whole bullets don't affect the guests. Yeah. They never explain it. And it seems like a big, like, loophole of, like, wait, how does the bullet <clears throat> not kill humans yeah. but does kill robots? I didn't get how the bullets worked. Uh, I listened to this other podcast about it, and they theorized that it 
like it's just futuristic technology and they're able to like program these bullets to sense whether it's biological or whether it's like robotic when it on impact mm-hmm. but and so then, you're, you're making me stretch too far with belief there and then on they also theorize that the old west world in the in the past like the bullets hurt more mm-hmm. because you see like one time where william gets shot or something and he like takes it like a paintball and like falls down Okay. But then in the later scene, in the later years, the man in black's getting shot and he's just like taking it like. Tsk, tsk. Yeah. But. It doesn't really hurt. Him. I think he was just prepared for it more because in other he's scenes, like, he takes more. it, yeah. And then they say that, like, the further out you get from the main area, like, the crazier it gets and, like, the more intense it gets and that the, the world won't give you more than you can take. But it feels like something they needed to explain right away. Like, you can't just say the bullets. <laughs> don't kill humans and then not explain how they they manage to kill robots. That's true. Like, you can't just leave it up there. Yeah. Because they explain, like, the daggers and stuff, like, they can just stop Mm -hmm. the robot from actually killing you. Yeah. Yeah, I wish they would explain that a little more. Like, there's a lot of little details, like, when the guests come and the hosts, do they get cleaned out, or does the semen and fluids, like... (laughs) Magically, like, disappear this is inside a good them. Question. I, I would think there's already a mechanism inside them to, to prevent, prevent this, like, a like self, to get rid of it. An internal douche. Yeah, I would think so. Well, but if you're, I mean, it's that's half the reason people would go to Westworld, right? If you're a host, do you use the bathroom? It it never showed them like using the bathroom really. That's a good question. It shows them bleeding. I would think they it, would have to. It showed them eating, right? Yeah. I would think they have to. They definitely drank. That one guy was always drinking that milk. They'd have to just because of... If they're trying to be real, Mm -hmm. but they don't use the restroom or anything, then that's going to really throw off... You know, like if somebody visits and they need to use the restroom, they'll be like, well, what? What are you talking about? (laughs) Yeah. What do you mean take a piss? They said they have, like, self-correcting stuff to, like, fill in for their logic gaps, though. So if one of them starts, like to get off the logical path, they'll try to, like, self-correct and, like, make up something in their head to, like, explain it or just, like, change the subject. Like, yeah. one of the other hosts will come in and just, like, change completely. the subject completely. So there's, like, fail-safes there, but sometimes it, don't, it doesn't work and they just, like, lose it. I don't know. I, f- I feel like the most... They would have to have a whole mechanism for them to use the restroom and everything, but that doesn't seem, like, hard if you're talking about a human analog. That's yeah. That's hard to me. And then to just add something, they don't really need a uterus, so it could just come inside them and then it yeah, goes away. Yeah, I they wanted to see it. I wanted, like, a good shot of their insides, because it never really showed that, because it's referenced once where the man in black cut one open just to see what was inside. Yeah. But they never actually showed well, they us. they show in the intro them being built. They look very... Yeah, but there's an old model and a new mm. model, and he said the old model, like, they kind of showed it with Dolores when she got cut when uh, William and, and, I forget his friend's name, his brother-in-law. Yeah, I know you're talking about When that. they had her in the camp, and he's like, look, and he, like, cut her open, and there was, like, a moving gear inside of her. like True, but she was an old one, right? Yeah, she was an old version, and the newer ones are supposed to be more lifelike. That's what I think. So the new ones are more like what the intro is. The old ones probably have gears and some more. But it didn't show yeah. like, it just showed like the bones and like the tendons. Like what about the muscles and like the blood? Like how, it showed that. How are you going to program that? Is it like nanobots and like it looks like muscle but it's really like. Well muscle tissue has electricity in it. I mean that's how a muscle works. So you could have the tendons and everything be cables. Okay. I guess. I, I mean, still I still would like to see how inside. muscles work, so I don't I'm remembering I don't know if this was a trailer, but I remember maybe it was a movie and I'm just confusing it, but there was a big conference room and Dolores was like sitting at the head of the conference room and he was talking about artificial intelligence and how this is the next big thing and then he goes to her and like opens up her face and she like opens up and he's just like Programming the yeah. face. But she's an old robot, right? I, this scene, Dolores was I'm old. not sure if the scene was in Westworld or if it, I'm confusing it with the movie I watched or what if it was a trailer. It? I don't know. It, that has like a completely different movie? Maybe. 
I don't but know. it wouldn't matter if it was Dolores anyways, because she's an old robot, so she would have old gear parts. That's true. I thought she was converted to a newer one, though, eventually, and they just... Like, eventually, like, they showed that... So it depend on what If their bodies get so tore up, like, they'll... Yeah. They'll import their consciousness to a new body. But then it would just depend on what timeline we're watching. Is it happen with the young man in black? Then it would be the old robot version. If it happens with the older... Man in Black, then it'd be the new, yeah. upgraded <clears throat> version. I don't know. My my biggest issue was they just made things really confusing. They did, but I think it's easy for me to zone out on the show because I'm like, I really don't know what's happening right now. They said this season was kind of like a preseason to the rest of the show and like the <clears throat> main story, and that the main story was like way different than this, and this was just like a setup to show you how everything worked <laughs> and like how everything eventually comes to be. I think. Because I think the point was that the robots can eventually become conscious if they break through the wall. Yeah. And, like, go through a traumatic event or, like, just teach each other how to be conscious. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. So... Do you think they're actually going to do Samurai World? Or yeah. Are they going to continue with Westworld? I think there's going to be a, d- a bunch of different parks. I don't know if each season will focus on a different one, but they mention, like, Park 1 and, like, Park 4 and, like... Yeah. I think Westworld is Park 1, and then I think Samurai World was Park 4. But that's my my point. Do you think like that was just a hint of what will happen seasons down the road? Or do you really think they'll just jump right into Samurai World? Uh, it's hard to say, because they kind of ended it. Like They could have just ended it there and be like, Anthony Hopkins killed all the, uh, the investors, and then the host took over Westworld, mm-hmm. and that was it. But I think they're going to make an arc from that and say, like, new investors came in and, like, the man in black kept funding the West World and, like, covered up this whole mm. slaughtering of people. So you're thinking, like, the first episode they might wrap up last season and then move on. Mm-hmm. And arc from there and be like, well, now let's look at this park and see what's going on here. Hmm. What would be a cool park? Uh, I mean, Samurai Park is pretty, Samurai would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, Samurai Park is pretty awesome. Uh, there could just be like... What about a futuristic park? Yeah, futuristic that park. That would be sweet. Just like the real world? Like a... Uh, well, that would be too obvious if they did a... Uh, what's the name? Blade Runner. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Futuristic, because that was like the whole storyline behind Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, i trying to think of what... If I wanted to go into Westworld... What would be my ideal Westworld? What would be your ideal Westworld? Oh, like a World of Warcraft theme? Oh, like a fantasy? Yeah, like That'd a fantasy thing bothered. where you're like running around getting different gear and stuff. You could and actually like, probably have magic and shit mm-hmm. in there too. Yep. Oh, that is a good one. Like a video game setting or like, I don't know, you could do a bunch of different things with it. Yeah. Wow. I didn't even, I didn't even think about taking it to a fantasy world. Mm-hmm. That is a good answer. What would be another... What would I want? You Fan, now like, that you said fantasy, that's a really good one. Some people even say that... Uh, what is it? Westeros World. Westeros World. Game of Thrones <laughs> is actually just a simulation <laughs> of Westworld. And it's just a park. And all of this is going to end with... But it really only all takes place in the Matrix. With Anthony so. Hopkins just walking in and everyone freezing. And you're like... <laughs> <laughs> Damn, George R. R. Martin, we did not see that coming at all. <laughs> that would be pretty good. Man, what would be the funnest... I would, like, if you were in the fantasy West world, mm-hmm. what would you be? What, what would be your normal character? Like, are you talking... When I first started Lord watching the show, I almost didn't give it a chance, and I almost turned it off because I thought it was just a cheesy western or, like... You don't like westerns in general? Not really, like... Maybe that's It was just them riding the head. train, and then he was, like, walking up through the dust, and, like, just in this, like, dirt town, and I was like, I don't really want to watch a western. I just wasn't in the mood at the time. Uh-huh. And then it, like, started going behind the scenes, and you're like, yeah. oh, and then, like, the prostitutes come out, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. We can get behind that. <laughs> See, personally, that was another thing I didn't like, was that the western was just kind of... It wasn't like a western movie at all. They didn't... The Western part was just kind of there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't a big... It was called Westworld, yet the Western part of it didn't really matter that much. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, you had the the old school shootouts and stuff, and like. Yeah, but it wasn't the like they're doing a train robbery, you know, or anything like that. <clears throat> like there was no. The storyline was so focused on the man in black mm-hmm. doing all that stuff. Yeah. So that's what got me because I love westerns. Like I don't know if you ever watched Deadwood. Uh, that's a show. Yeah. Have you watched Deadwood? Uh, yeah, I watched a couple episodes of it. You just don't like westerns? I'm just not really into them. I've watched... What is West- it you don't like I've watched westerns? classic westerns, and I've... Like, they're good movies. I'm just, mm-hmm. like, not into them. Like, I don't know. That setting just like, doesn't what, appeal what to me. What westerns have you watched? I feel like that's part of the problem is... Like, the good, awful the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. That one was good, I'll admit. Yeah. But at the same time, I was like, I probably won't watch it again. I thought, like, a recent one. The Wild Wild West. <laughs> Dude, that's actually... I like that one, though. <laughs> like, have you watched, like, The the Quick and the Dead? No. Or... Uh, what was that Gino's one? Hateful Eight? I haven't watched that Richard one yet. Brit. What was that one that Clint Eastwood was in that was... Where he had that air pump gun? The air pump gun? It was, like, a modern western. Huh. It was, like... He would, like, pump this gun. It was, like, a potato gun almost and he would pump it full of like compressed air oh 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 that wasn't Clint Eastwood you're talking about um shit what was the name of that movie it was uh it's used to kill cows God, I just rewatched that movie too No Country for Old Men yeah that one that was yeah it was like a modern western it wasn't a western mm. but it had that kind of pacing mm. yeah that was uh it wasn't Clint Eastwood it was um uh, Another really up there actor. Um, I swear it was Clint Eastwood. No, it's uh, oh, what is his name? I have to look it up. It's one of those older actors. That yeah. Stars in like a hundred movies, so I should th- be able to think of his name. Is um, your phone working? Mine is. Mine's yeah. Forever. I'm gonna try and beat your phone. Tommy Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, I got it. Dang. Okay. Tommy Lee Jones. Tons of movies. <laughs> Why can't I think of his name? But yeah. yeah, that was a good one. If they did, like, a Matrix Kung Fu style, I don't know. I don't know, because the Matrix would just be, like, normal setting. Kind of. With Agent Smiths coming out. With, like, modern guns. Yeah. I don't, do you, I don't know if they'd do a modern West Road. Do you think they'd do that? I don't know. Seems like that would be pointless. I don't know if they can, like, if they'll get to the point where they can, like, communicate through a server or something and, like, be able to read, our, read each other's minds and, like, act as, like, one unit, you know? What do you mean? Like, the hosts, if they'll be able to, like, like, uh, on this game Metal Gear Solid, eventually in the future these soldiers get implants in their brain where they can all, like, uh, be linked, mind-linked. Yeah. So when they're in battle, they'll act as one unit and they'll, like, be able to surround someone, like, very efficiently. I get what you're saying. Because... Their minds see what everyone else is seeing. I don't see why they couldn't do that, since they would be all part of a server. Mm-hmm. I would assume, unless they're all, they all have their own local server, so that doesn't happen in case they become conscious. Yeah. So they couldn't take over. I don't know where they're going. That go might be a whole storyline that they're working on. But remember how they were trying to get information out of the park, and they put a bunch of information in that old guy, that the old dad. Yes. And they were like. We downloaded everything to him, and you need to get him out of the park so we can, like, re- preserve this information before Anthony Hopkins destroys everything. Yeah. D- he didn't get out, did he? He was, like, activated as part of the Killer Robot Army. It was too long ago to remember that. I think, I feel like I saw him in the Killer Robot Army, and that <laughs> they actually didn't get him out, because... Or that one guy was supposed to be in charge, that dude, that dumb dude... He was like, he wrote the stories, and then he got yeah, real yeah, mad. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because he left the party, and he didn't die. Remember, uh-huh. she walked up to him, and he's like, you should, you got something to do, don't you? And then yeah. he left the party before everyone got mm-hmm. killed. Yeah, he didn't get killed. I did like the the prostitute storyline, how she, like, rose to power. Oh, prostitute. yeah, hers was good. Yeah, that was a cool storyline. Once again, like, too much of... The show for me was confusing because it was like the same characters mm-hmm. dying and coming back. And you're like, I, I already was confused about the timeline. 
that's what was confusing to me is I was already wondering like wait this these timelines are weird to me mm -hmm. like I don't understand what's happening when I think I enjoyed it more because I kind of knew what was going on yeah because I would read reddit and I'd be like yeah that's a pretty good theory like but you just see how watch it would be hard see. to follow if you didn't know that like yeah it was purposely in a weird order mm -hmm. but like they tried to hide that it was in a weird order but to me I was like I'm confused like what What's the sequence of events here? Because other true. things happening out of order. So I really did. It was like watching Pulp Fiction, but still not having a clue what. Like, and then what. like the whole Bernard scenes when he was talking to Dolores, mm -hmm. that was actually Arnold talking to Dolores. Yeah. And that was hard to pick up point. on when you watch it the first time because you're like, why yeah, I didn't is even Bernard? Think about that. Why is Bernard talking to Dolores and like why does she keep waking up in this bed like in the same spot? Like, yeah. Is this happening overnight? Because that's what I thought at first. That's why I was so confused by this show. But then, once I theorized it, I was like, oh, like, that would make sense if it's in a different timeline. Yeah. That's what, it just hurt my head too much while, while watching it. It's like, I, I'm really confused about what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And then the reveal, I was like, oh, so that's why I was confused the whole time. <laughs> I think I like to be confused a little. A little bit. I like to be confused, but then I like for them to explain it, too. The confusion needs to lead to suspense. I.e., lost. <laughs> confused you, and then just didn't, ex like, use the miracle. Had, so they did the opposite problem. They had the suspense the whole time, mm -hmm. but no actual ending. Right. Westworld had all the confusion, but no suspense, but they had an ending for it. So if they can get those writers together, <laughs> they can make something amazing. They should rewrite Lost. They really should. I'm wondering when that's going to happen. <clears throat> that's going to happen eventually, right? Um, you know it's going to... I mean, there's probably some fan fiction out there that's better than the real ending. Probably. Someone put took the episodes and spliced them into chronolo chronological order so you can watch Lost. Like the flashbacks and everything? Yeah, so they took all the flashbacks and all of, like the time traveling and just like... Organized it. Including, like, the flashbacks of their life? Yep. Really? So you'll just watch everything in order, and then, that like, right up till the ending. Like, you'd actually see, um... Because the real plane crash watch. wouldn't take place, like, right up until here. Yeah, it'd like, take a while. Because they spent, like, 30 years or something with Darden or whatever. What was it? Was it Darden? Darden. The... The company... The... The underground... The... the yeah, who built the underground thing? It's not stuff. Darden. It does start with a D, though. Duh. It has the, like, octagon shape. Yeah. Dharma? Dharma. That's it. Dharma yeah. is it. Dharma Initiative. Dharma Initiative. Yep. But that would really start, like, way back with, like, Locke and his girlfriend and all that stuff, too. Mm -hmm. It would be well, it would start with the Dharma Initiative, because that was way back in, like, the It 60s. would be interesting to watch that way, and then I think... When you would get close to the end, you would just turn it off and be like, nah, I'm like, it didn't end like that. <laughs> that doesn't that make sense. That would be interesting, though, because you, like, see the Dharma Initiative mm -hmm. and already know what the hatch is. Mm -hmm. So it'd be kind of like a like hair-raising moment, like, whoa, you already know what it is. Yeah, I think you would be watching, like, a whole new show. Now, here's where do you cut it off. Um, you'd also have to, you'd watch all the others, too. You'd know about the mm -hmm. others before the main people found the others. Right. That'd I think when Evil Locke comes, like, probably evil in the... Evil Locke. Like, Locke died, and then, like, Evil Guy took Locke's body, I think. Wait, I don't remember this at all. Locke gets <clears throat> killed, and he's in this casket, and then, like, he pops oh, up yeah. again, and then he's weird. Was that, like... That was around fourth or fifth. Yeah, season. it was close was, to the end. Is where it started to go down there. Yeah, and then it's really confusing because you're like, is that... Because sometimes he'll do locky things, and other times he'll just be really <laughs> evil. Locky things? Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. <clears throat> He's like, he does lock things that mm -hmm. seem evil, but then you see his past, and you're like, oh, that's why lock does that shit. Yeah. Really, the, the show really started to go downhill after... Right after the season, more like the scene, when, um... Shit, what's the name of the main character? Uh... Jack. Jack. Right after Jack's, like, we gotta go back. Kid. Oh, yeah. Like, right after that, almost, is like, it just started to go downhill. So, that, mm. that moment, you're just like, wait, what? <laughs> I'm I'm gonna look out there and see if there's, like, a fan fiction out there that tries to fill in all these plot holes and if it, like, makes sense. 
depending on how easy it is to find the chronological loss, I might end up watching that. That'd yeah. be awesome. I don't know. I, I, the show has to be remade eventually, just with its popularity. Yeah. And they could start with... Do you think they would change it, though? Because it would kind of ruin some of it, like, if they discovered the hatch. I think they could, like, maybe go back and explain more about the others, and then <clears throat> uh, Walt's son, like... Yeah, Walt, whatever, but Walt just disappeared. He, like, went back to live with his grandma. He got off the island, and it showed him, like, living with his grandma and stuff, and, like, birds were still hitting the window, and then he would get, like... Yeah, but it never, like, went anywhere, though. Yeah. It was a major plot point for, like, a season, and then he just kind of mm-hmm. went away. Yep. Like, okay, I guess we're done with Watt. <laughs> yeah, things like that where they just like pick up and then they like just drop it. Yeah. <clears throat> they have really cool things though. Like in the final season, they f- they finally um, told you the whole backstory of Jack's tattoo. Oh yeah. And stuff like that. Mm-hmm. No, the show was good. Like the first season was really good with the character development, like yeah. the way they told it. The first three seasons are probably some of the best seasons on television. Mm-hmm. Just once you get into that fourth and fifth, it's... Who is that one other, the, like, the Latina other they found? Or no, she was on the... Lucia? Yeah, she was on the other part of the plane. She was the worst. Yeah. She was, like, a character... She was just such a stereotypical character, you couldn't like her. And it's a character, that actress is literally that person in every show. Strong female uh, character. Was she in Dexter, too? Oh, I, I feel like she was in Dexter and you kind of hated her there too. But sometimes it works out, like on Breaking Bad with Skylar. Yeah. Like everyone hated Skylar, but she was the best bitch there was. Yep. She's like, I fucked it. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, you didn't. She, she, see, that's the thing. You could hate Skylar, but then all of a sudden, like, something would happen. You're like, you know what, Skylar hates so bad. Yeah. <laughs> like,. You actually understood where she was coming. Some from. Some characters are good at being the bad guy. Like, yeah. uh, do you have you caught up on The Walking Dead? No. Well, they introduced Negan, and Negan's like this really charismatic, like evil guy. He's uh-huh. like a sociopath, and like you just want him to like die. Like <laughs> he does. Like he's like sadistic, but then yeah. he'll like smile and just be like making jokes and stuff. <laughs> and he's really good at playing that character, though. Well, um. What is the Dos Pollos guy? Uh, what, Dos Hermanos guys. Uh, the, the chicken G- guy. Gary? G- Guillermo? Gus. No. Gus. Gus, yeah. Gus. He was a good bad guy. Like, he was, mm-hmm. same thing, charismatic, but kind of, like, sadistic, but really smart, so you, like, respected him. Walt was kind of the bad guy, too. Walt was an anti-hero. Yeah. <clears throat> they that were both. The point. They were both the same, but you're rooting for Walt because you're just like. I think that's kind of what they wrote the show to be. Like you started to like slowly realize, like Walt is kind of kind of a dick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Best part in the whole show by far is the last season when he does that like last conversation with Skyler, mm-hmm. and he's like. I did this for and she's like, if you say family one more time, like whatever, and he's like, no, I did it for me, and like that whole conversation uh, was like, amazing. I was good at it. <laughs> yeah, it was like, the character arc for Walt was so good. Mm-hmm. It was. <clears throat> I just rewatched it recently, too. Uh, it's, so, it's been a couple years. So good. And I still agree with, with Harry, the only filler episode is that fly episode. Mm-hmm. It still has some char- like character development and plot points. But they could have done something else that whole time. Yeah, something else would have been more interesting. Yeah, for sure. It was a weird episode for that whole show. Uh, one of the points in that show was Hank's wife, Marie. She was like a kleptomaniac at one point. Yeah. A couple times it showed up. Mm-hmm. And then they didn't really develop on that. I'm trying to remember. That. She like stole that tiara for... They built, they built up on that. What, what because did they do so that? she first started doing it with stealing... Um, yeah, the tiara, and that's how um, Skylar found out. Then she went to like some shops and started stealing stuff. And then when Hank was going through like being shot and you know their minerals, she started going to showings, mm-hmm. like house showings, oh, yeah, stealing yeah. stuff from houses. And it was really all a setup, not to to build her character as much as to, um, I think, just to cause tension between her and Hank. I'm trying to remember. Because it, it caused tension between her and Hank, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it also set up for um, 
there's a setup for it, and I remember, because it didn't build Skylar up. I know that. Yeah. It didn't really, it gave her a little dynamic, but it was such a, like, I don't know. You know it wasn't like, she went from a one-dimensional character to a two-dimensional character, <laughs> not like a three-dimensional character. Yeah. But there was definitely a setup that I can't, I can't remember, where it was an obvious, like, they needed her to do something wrong, uh, so Hank had to call somebody to go uh, get her yeah. kind of thing. Like, it was, it helped the storyline uh-huh. at some point, not really her character. Mm-hmm. I see. But definitely one of the best. The best shows on TV, Lost, I don't count Game of Thrones, because it's too much just based on books. Like, it wasn't really HBO that made a great show. Westworld's based on a book. Is it really? Yep. I thought it was... So it, So there was an old Westworld, and that was based on a book. There was an old movie, Westworld. A movie, okay, was yeah. a movie. No, but there was a book, too. But that's what I'm saying, though. The movie was based on the books. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> anyways, Lost, mm-hmm. um, The Wire, and probably Breaking Bad, by far the best. Yeah, so what would be your top three then? Oh. See, like, a lot of people might add Sopranos. I don't know if you watched that, but The Sopranos was one of those first ones. So if you try and rewatch it, it's just so much filler. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I didn't watch that. Way too much filler. I didn't watch a lot of HBO shows until, uh... You did watch The Wire, right? Nope. You still haven't watched The Wire? No. Holy shit, how is this not (laughs) But I think Boardwalk Empire... That show kind of that like was declined like the first, for me. The first, yeah, it did decline, but the first few seasons were pretty good. They, they were really good. And then that was the first HBO show I watched. And then Game of Thrones. And then Dexter. Dexter was good for a few seasons. Yeah, so Dexter had a little falling. Uh, weeds. <sighs> weeds? Like, it just went on for too long. Uh, so in my top, Lost was up there just because of the hype. Like, you were so hyped every week. You can't week. not love Lost. It's like... And then, like, I think you gave me the first two seasons, and I watched it in, like, two or three days. Yeah. It was, like, that first binge watch show, really. Um, Some people caught on to it kind of late. Breaking Bad and Stranger Things was pretty good. Yeah. The thing is, they've only had one season, so yeah. it's hard to, like, judge off a little bit. It was a season. pretty cool, like, throwback to, like... Yeah. Oh, they definitely pandered to it our was, age group. It was like watching an eight-hour movie. Yeah, that's true. Because you were just like, oh my god, Netflix like the whole time. Just, they're, they're so good right now. They're killing it with, with shows. Mm-hmm. They just really something I was going to watch. And then uh, Mr. Robot. I like Mr. Robot. <gasps> oh, yeah. I forgot. I watched that whole season. Mm-hmm. I kind of forgot about the it. Whole, I knew this this what was going on, but it's still good. The first season is really good, and then the second season, is it's still good, but it's different. Mm-hmm. But the first season, like... Um, Did you not see that coming? I thought coming? about it. I like, thought, yeah. and then I would, like, read about it, and I was like, maybe... It's, that was another one that seemed obvious, but... Because I, I watched it good. after it had already been out for a while, so I tried... I <clears> didn't want to get it spoiled, so I couldn't read around too much. Yeah. And then, uh... It was definitely... It was good. Good plot. And then I think I would rewatch some episodes sometimes and like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and then definitely the part where he's pushed off the pier. Yes. And then the video replays and he's just he just falls off. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that was... Because he was crazy, so you already... He was just mm-hmm. such a wacky character. And you have a... They call it a untrustworthy narrator. Yeah. Because it's from his perspective most mm-hmm. of the time. So a lot of the things, you're not sure if, like, it happened or not. Yeah. But, Very true. But... Um... I don't have another one. And then uh, Tyrell, I like the the Tyrell character, and he's not in season two. Which one was Tyrell? Tyrell uh, Wellick, the uh, the junior CEO, pretty much, and he's like he has a really hot wife. Dude, it's been too he long. He beat up the bum after he didn't get the job. He paid the bum and the dude. bum, and he like beat him up in the alley. And All I can remember is that dude. Uh, Christian and they had Slater. That weird meeting spot. And Christian Slater would yeah. obviously I remember Christian and then, Slater. Uh, like Tyrell made friends with the other CEO or the CTO and they had dinner together and then he walked in the bathroom with his wife and she was just like pee in and he's just like standing oh, there. Oh yeah. And yeah, then yeah, she's yeah. like That was interesting. That was <laughs> He like, was such an interesting yeah. character and then I think that was kinda why season two was a letdown because he's yeah. not in most of it. Yeah, that that's what kept me watching. Because mm-hmm. I kind of 
knew what was happening with him and Christian Slater. And then his wife is crazy, too, because she's, yeah. like, into rough stuff, but then she's, like, a master manipulator. Yeah. Did, have you ever watched Silicon Valley? Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> that show's good. So fun. I just finished watching it. Mm-hmm. That whole scene where they're talking about how to jack off yeah. a whole room full of guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, they're breaking it down, like, girth to, or what was it? Uh, dick to floor ratio DTF mm-hmm. and they're just like if you do two that are edge to edge you can do four at a time <laughs> and then the one guy later on was like so does girth matter for your ability to jerk off because I feel like you'd have to close and open close and open <laughs> so you'd have to <laughs> oh yeah. god that was so weird didn't the guy that wrote <laughs> Beavis and Butthead write that Mike Judge yeah I think that's a Mike Judge show I really wouldn't be surprised yep I'm pretty sure that's it. So, Nick was telling me, it, it, apparently that's just, and I've read on Reddit, it's actually pretty close to a lot of, like, what happens in Silicon Valley with mm-hmm. the, star the, the and industry stuff. and the weird characters. Mm-hmm. Like, I would think in that industry you do have some wacky people. Oh, yeah. It's, you're going to have very antisocial people and people that are, like, big personalities. I heard that... <clears throat> There's a few of them that'll like microdose on like acid or shrooms. Oh, just yeah. Because it like gives them more creativity. Mm-hmm. Like, not enough to like actually get like off, but just something about taking it like increases their creativity. Yeah, no, I've, that's supposedly a really big thing. Um, what's his name? Tim Ferriss talks about that a lot. About mm-hmm. how people microdose or use modafinil mm-hmm. all the time. Everyone's probably on Adderall. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. So, like, modafinil would be, like, an Adderall, except with a lot less side effects and a lot less speedy. Mm. Have you ever tried it? Mm -mm. It's interesting. Nope. It's like a more intense coffee, except you're not jittery. Mm. You feel like you're spot on and, like, you can, Mm -hmm. you're in the zone kind of thing. Somebody needs to remake Lost. I think that's what we figured out after this podcast. Remake Lost. I need to. I need to watch the chronological Lost. That, that sounds interesting. Mm. See from the very. It has to start with the Dharma Initiative. Nothing could have come before that. Uh. I mean, that's like sixties and seventies, right? Yeah, I think. Unless there was like one of them as a child in the fifties or something, a flashback. I'm not sure how far Desmond went back when he was jumping through time and stuff. Oh yeah, Desmond jump was like time, jumping like he? all over the place, and like I feel like he went like way way back at some point. That would be intriguing, too. But if they redid it, they definitely need different actors, because there's no way you could get yeah, the actors you, Yeah, you would the have budget. to. But a lot of the same characters. Mm-hmm. Some of the characters you could remove. I feel like the um, the brother-sister, they were interesting, but they, they could be cut. Yeah, they were just kind they, of like... at the. They went because they like had bad deeds <clears throat> or something. Like, yeah. Teresa falls up the stairs. Teresa falls down the stairs. <laughs> I don't know. They, they're an interesting side story, but not enough to keep them if you wanted to do a... There was another couple like that where they had like a filler episode and it was like a couple who like had betrayed each they other. Were, it was the same, that couple, mm-hmm. one, of, one of the people from that couple, and then there was some, yeah, was some other couple that was from the others and they had like that whole poison story and mm-hmm. so they got buried alive mm-hmm. and then, yeah, it was like a literally like a one episode side story. Yeah, I was always disappointed <laughs> in those, and like there was so much hype, answer shit. So much hype with the hatch, and then when you got in the hatch, there was a counter, and you're like, "What happens when it goes to zero? And the then, hype lived up to that, or the hatch lived up to the hype. Mm-hmm. The others lived up to the hype, and then in the fourth season, that's when you started to get like, uh, "What happened with the countdown though?" Like. That's when the the island moved. Oh, okay. So when they didn't press the button... It was like a disruption in time and space. Yeah. And he had been, like, releasing the electromagnetic field. uh, There's no real explanation for it. That's the problem. It's such a good storyline, though, having that 108 minutes, and they had to keep pressing it. Mm Mm-hmm. And they always had, like, the secret, like, the 4, 8, 15, 16... 23, 42 all added up to 108. Yeah. And then Hurley. Hurley. Her, that's going to be a tough character to replace. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like you think they would do the same characters? Or maybe they'd have like a whole new cast with different side stories. That way you don't see any of it coming. I'd like to see technology progress enough where they can just CGI everyone and have it look real. 
I, I don't want that. I don't want the same exact characters. I want one with or the actors, same exact characters say. with the plot holes filled in, and then I want a whole different story arc, too. <laughs> I don't know. I think with the way it's moving today, like, there's tons of content out there, and now with Netflix, we can just consume it in, like, a couple of days now. Like, a whole mm-hmm. season, just, like, a couple of days. Yeah. So, like, we're releasing more and more new <clears> content, <throat> and eventually it's going to get to the point where, like, it's just going to be, like, this whole universe that we release, and, like... Dude, what if Netflix picks up Lost? That would be awesome. That would be so good. I'm trying to think of what that movie was. I just saw on Netflix, I was like, that sounds funny. Cool. There's this new movie trailer they just released for Netflix. It's called like I, I, I Boy. Yeah, yeah I, I just Boy. watched that. That looked really good. There's People were sh- making fun of it because oh, that looked cool. Because they pretty the name's much stupid. they pretty much gave out the whole story plot in the trailer. They're like boy likes girl, boy goes to see girl, but uh, something happens with the gang and boy feels bad, so he like goes back to the gang to like yeah. try to stop him. Boy gets hurt. Pieces of the cell phone get stuck in his head somehow, and he gets superpowers. That's definitely an issue with trailers, especially for movies. And then drug kingpin like and antagonizes boy and like gets his girl, and then like boy has to go save girl. <laughs> yeah, they they need to make more <clears throat> teasers rather than full on trailers. Yeah. Because anymore it does feel like I get a I can get an entire plot. They were just saying that the whole plot is kind of generic in t- uh, terms of, like, how unique the idea was, but then, like, the plot they decided to apply to it was just, like, a generic yeah, Spider-Man plot where, like, you know, yeah. it's kind of the Spider-Man story. I don't know. I'll watch it. That's sure. Yeah, I'll check it out. Did it you watch Macy Luke Williams Cage? In it. Uh, is that a series on Netflix? Yeah. No, I haven't watched it yet. Is it good? Uh, no. See, I, like, it was another, like, superhero one, it was a continuation, like, like a side story of um, uh, Daredevil. Oh, okay. And I personally just, I'm getting so tired of superhero movies, so I never bothered watching it. Yeah. But I guess it didn't get a lot of really good reviews. Hmm. Yeah, I might have to watch it. There's just a couple ones on there. It's called, like, AU or something. Or the OA? The OA. That's really good. That's really what good? I was trying to think of, what I just recently watched. That was really good. Okay. I mean, it's not like 10 good, but it's up there. It's 8 or 9. Mm-hmm. What was that one show that you watched that <clears throat> was like about... It was like a, a pilot episode that Fox might pick up, I think. And it was kind of like a 40-minute movie type thing. And then it features these people in this like building. And this building is special oh, because yeah, the building jumps really through time. Good. And then in the dude, end, dude, I forgot all about the that. end sets it up like it's going to be a yeah. series, and then I forget what it's called now. Dude, that was so good, too. Yeah. I can't remember. Whoops. Whoa, you're watching porn over there? Yeah, apparently I actually hit play on one of these. Whoa. Yeah, what was that? That was a really good show. I wonder if it got picked up. I forget what it was called. So another really good one is 3%. 3%. I'd actually say that's better than No Way. Is it on Netflix? Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, I don't know how much you like reading captions. It is in Portuguese. Yeah. I personally love foreign movies. Oh, is it about the baseball team or something? Or no. the soccer team? It's kind of like a, uh, like a Hunger Games Battle Royale, sort of. Okay. But it's these, this poor district or whatever it's called. I, what are they called? I don't know, the rich people are called the offshore mm-hmm. in this poor district. Oh, yeah. Every year, all these kids, once you're 20, get to yeah. go to try and be a part of the offshore. I've so seen that. Only... I've seen the trailer for that. Okay. It looks good. It was it was really good. Just the first episode, a lot of, like, build up for the rest of it, but mm-hmm. this show, like, literally, they every like, episode gets better. They put these kids through tests and yes. like, to see who's, like, in the top 3%. Uh-huh. And then, Pretty much. Yeah. That's the whole show's... And just, like, the fourth episode, that's all I gotta say, is, like, you gotta watch up until the fourth episode. I think I did start to watch it, but I was pretty tired at the time, and I found out there was subtitles, and I was like, (laughs) not in the mood. That's an easy one to skip over if you're not in the mood for subtitles. But I did watch Narcos. (laughs) Did you watch Narcos? I didn't watch the second season. Okay. Or, is it third season now? No, it's just second. Second. I didn't watch the second season. Okay. I felt like I got tired after the first one. Like, the first one was really good. 
Mm -hmm. Now, how's the second one? Uh, the second one was pretty good. I don't think it was as good as the See, first. That's what I had a feeling. But, yeah, like, it's hard to, like, keep the character going because... Exactly. With Pablo <laughs> Escobar, like, you already know the story, and you know, like, he eventually falls, so... That, that was my whole problem with it. It's hard to see, like, to keep, like... I don't know, you were kind of rooting for him, though. Yeah, it didn't feel like a show that needed to be... Like, I don't know if season two ends it, but I feel like you shouldn't go beyond season two. Did you see when he pulls the, like, the ambush on the, the cop, though? I hope. The cop's driving through the streets and he gets ambushed. Yeah, I think I did. That was in season two, right? Maybe, and he like. Because I watched like a couple episodes. Of season like two. Pablo gets a bullet from the cop, and the cops like give this to Pablo. It's the bullet I'm going to use to kill him. Yeah. And then Pablo yeah. takes that bullet and he kills the cop with it. And that's yeah. yeah. But the first season was interesting just because it's like it shows how the empire got started yeah. and stuff, and like shows him like rising to power. Stuff you wouldn't know from knowing just who Pablo Escobar is. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But now that he's in prison, you know, okay, so he's gonna escape prison, he's gonna rise and eventually go to jail. Yeah. So it's like <laughs> you already kind of know where it's all headed towards. Another thing, all the sex scenes were like they were always sitting up, like they all use the same position. Were like. The guy is like <laughs> on the bottom, and the girl's sitting on his lap, and they're just like going at it like that. Like, there was one guys episode. Never changed position. Yeah, like, there was one episode on. where it was like three or four consecutive scenes of everyone having sex, and each scene had the same position. All right, so you're asking the real questions. <laughs> Who's in charge of sex scenes for Narcos? Maybe they just thought it was the most <clears throat> natural way to like do dialogue and show titties without yeah. having to show dick. Yep, that's probably what it is. I don't know, I feel like you could get a good doggy style. You just want to, <laughs> like, you got to have the right angle. I think Pena did a doggy style in one of the later episodes. I think the doggy style is not as flattering for the woman, though. Mm -hmm. that's, see, that's Can't weird. go Team America on it. <laughs> and then if you do, like, a missionary position, you can really only focus on one character at a time without showing too much. That's true. So, yeah, we, we saw why that's the good position. <laughs> could have done maybe a reverse cow or something. Pile driver. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to do a pile driver. <laughs> you're, you're just want like extra, extra <laughs> I mean, X, Netflix could do it. They, they could just show like the top portion with the, the guy and like the legs are like spread and he's like holding the legs. <laughs> Gee, and I then it shows the girl just like standing on her head. And just you're going to have casual dialogue while pile driving? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works that way. <laughs> Now, that's another thing. If Lost got picked up by like Netflix or something else, they could do a little more with it. Mm -hmm. The other problem, Nef or Netflix, Lost had the knock people out with one hit problem. Mm -hmm. Like anytime they need somebody to just get knocked out and be dragged, it was like, <laughs> knock yeah. out and drag away. They had that a lot. A lot. Like... Jack should probably have brain damage and be retarded <laughs> at the end of that season. Yeah, show. that's uh, a <clears throat> that's one thing. Like a show like Archer takes into consideration, like really the the real time circumstances of the things. Like he's always got like tinnitus in his ear from all the gunshots he hears. Like after a gunfight, <laughs> he's like, "What? Like I can't hear you. Like what? Really? Like, everything sounds muffled." I need to watch Archer more. And then he'll like. He has this weird thing where he'll count bullets, and he'll know if somebody's out of bullets or not. <laughs> like, oh, like time to go. He's reloading. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Why don't real shows do that? Mm -hmm. And they'll just take him... One of the best shows on TV, Rick and Morty. Oh, I still haven't Can't watched wait. that. At all? I watched, like, an episode of it. Dude, what? <laughs> I, I would say Game of Thrones and Rick and Morty, t best shows on TV right now. Really? Yeah. Because Rick and Morty has, like, that really dumb, poopy comic humor mm -hmm. mixed with very intelligent humor hmm. and intelligent plot lines. Like, the show makes you think while also telling dick and fart jokes. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's why it's, like, so good. The very intriguing plot lines. Did you watch it, like, do you remember what episode you watched? I think it was just, like, the pilot. Before he had to, like, shove things up his butt? I don't know. <laughs> if, if that doesn't... Ring a bell. Order, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need you to shove these up your asshole. <laughs> so 
maybe mine are, all, mine are all loose and sounds kind of familiar now. Yeah, he ha- he needs the whatever that egg or whatever is, mm-hmm. but they have to go across the alien customs basically. And he uh, shoved up too many up his butthole, so it's too <laughs> loose, so he can't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know, that show gets so whack. It gets dark. Yeah. Really dark. I've heard it gets dark. There's episodes where, like, you just, you watch them like, damn. Mm-hmm. Like, that's fucked up. That's why you need to actually watch the show in order to okay. kind of, they reference previous things that have happened since it is so dark. Mm-hmm. I watched uh, this anime movie called Colorful. Mm-hmm. And it was about this soul who had died, and it's in, like, the gate. Like the afterlife gate, and they're told that they're gonna get another chance to go back in this boy's body who that had just committed suicide, mm-hmm. and they're gonna put him in this body, and he has like a chance to redeem himself and like save his soul if huh. he can prove like he's worthy. That's not cool. And then it's a pretty good story. And I then, need to watch more anime because they have very very unique plot lines. That one was ranked like number one by somebody, but. Really? It was a really good story. That's why I, I need like a top 10 list of animes. I have like a top 150 list. I need the top 10 <laughs> <laughs> of animes. Because <laughs> all I've watched is Akira. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you would count um, Last Airbender because that's like American anime. Mm-hmm. And uh, Death Note was really good. Death I actually Note read all Death Note. You watched the uh, like the mm-hmm. series, the animated series. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read There's all the books, then I watched the series, which was basically the books. Mm-hmm. There's a live action movie too. Yeah, it's one of those things where I'm excited for it, but then is Hollywood gonna ruin it? Thing. I watched part of it. I was tired, so I like is kind it of fell asleep. Yeah, we have it somewhere. The live action one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been out for a while. So is I think it's is a, it like one? It's like a movie that covers the whole series. Yeah. See, that's so going like, to be my problem. They're going to have the, So, like, they cut a lot of stuff out. Yeah, that's going to be the issue. We'll see. But that was really good. Uh, there's one called Redline. I heard of that one. Redline was pretty good. It was What's like that a, one about? It's about these crazy racers, and it's like a, a death race, and it's just like a high action packed anime. Like a racer, speed racer kind of race, or like a... Yeah, speed racer, but like Japanese, like crazy anime version, hmm. with like sex and crazy I mean, crazy I, aliens. I didn't know live action Death Note was already out. Like, mm-hmm. I thought that was like months away. I thought it was like summer 2017 kind of release. Yeah. I don't watch, that's the problem with only watching things on Netflix or downloading it on BitTorrent. Like, you don't get any trailers, so you really don't have an idea of when mm-hmm. movies and stuff actually are released. It's hard to, like, judge animes <clears throat> by, like, their descriptions sometimes, and even, like, if you look at them sometimes, like, I don't know, because it's a cartoon, so you're just like... Yeah, well, so many of the animes just look the same until you actually mm-hmm. watch and get attachment to the characters. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how I got into Death Note. I think I randomly saw it at Barnes & Noble and read the back. Mm-hmm. And I actually started reading a couple pages. Like, I got engaged. I was mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, this is actually pretty fucking good. I'm going to buy this and got hooked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that Death Note's really good. Thing. Did you actually ever read Battle Royale? Yep. Uh, how think, was it as a book? Uh, is it a comic or is it a Yeah, novel? it's a manga. Manga. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was a novel or actually. It's really good. Novel, it's uh, it explains like a lot of more of the characters' backstories and stuff, mm-hmm. and like it's it really explain good. a lot more too of like the history of the battle. Royale. It's even more like uh, grotesque than the movie, like the, more than the movie. Yeah, like the like the you get inside the characters' heads, you know, and like yeah. what they're thinking and stuff, That's and then like true. the teachers, and then like uh, there's like a really slutty one who's like okay, I just can see like that. a total like whore, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And then... I need to read that sometime. You see, like, the betrayals and, like, what these kids yeah. will go through to, like, win this battle. Yeah, the the movie was just, like, a blood fest. There wasn't much character development. Yeah. Yeah, the books are really good if you really want to, like, That would understand. be a sweet one to do a Netflix series on. Mm-hmm. Then everyone would be like, they just copied Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> you know they would. Like, hold on, hold on a sec. Uh, I'm, I'm going to need a list of some good animes from you. Yeah, I'll just so I've been some. wanting to get into them. It's just like I don't know where to start. People always say like Trigun or Trigun's good. Um, Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop. That's the other one. 
Uh, I don't know. Samurai Shampoo is good. A lot of them are like slower. Like, That's what I don't like. Like the movies sometimes are just like they get. A lot of them have like a mystical side to them, but then like a, mm-hmm. a drama side. See, like Death Note was, it was long but fast paced most of the way. Mm-hmm. Akira was a movie, so it was fast paced the whole time. Mm-hmm. But I started to watch Cowboy Bebop, and the first episode was slow as fuck. You mm-hmm. gotta watch. Watch more Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. They're pretty interesting once you understand the characters and, like, what's going on. Because it's like a, like a, it's called the Syndicate, and they're like a big gang. Mm-hmm. And, like, Spike used to be part of the Syndicate okay. and stuff, and he has, like, this dark past. I need to watch it. <clears throat> I, I, I think I get the feeling that it's one you have to be, like, four or five episodes into before it gets real good. Mm-hmm. And then there's um the mech one. What's the mech one? They all have mechs, basically. Gundam? Gun. See, everyone says Gundam, but for some reason that's not what I think of, but it must be it. I've never watched Gundam. Is there another mech-related anime? Because mm. that's the only one people mention when I say I that. I mean, there probably is. Because I know Gundam. Gundam is the most popular. That has, like, the very anime-looking... There's a lot mechs. of animes out there that only have, like, one or two seasons, too, and they're really good because... <laughs> You get, you get to the a point. beginning, a development, and then, you know, That's what I a need. solid ending. Isn't Trigon one of those ones that goes on for a little while? Trigon has a, quite a few episodes. Full Metal Alchemist is really good. Full Metal Alchemist, I started watching that. That was that was good. That one's really good. But it was just, after like 10 episodes, I was kind of like, eh, I don't feel like the, finishing it all. Once you get into it, they start getting, like, with the homunculuses and, like, they yeah. have, like, a, the seven deadly sins theory and stuff, and, like, uh, each monster is a different deadly cool. sin, and, like, they all have these different things. Yeah, I think it's just one of those shows I kind of stop midway through for whatever reason. Um, yeah, I'll send you a list. Most of them are available on Watch Cartoon. It's watch called, Cartoon or Kiss? No, just watchcartoon.com. Hmm. I'll have to look them and up. you can just stream them all. Oh, that was a good uh, show, I, cartoon I just watched. Um, it's on Kiss Cartoon. It's like a Nickelodeon show. And... SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> no. Cat Dog. <laughs> no, it, it only had two seasons, and this grandpa. Hey, dude. Ran this like circus, not circus, but like a um, store where you buy like. Freak show type stuff. Um, and it turned out like he are you afraid really of the dark? Fought. You haven't. You, this none of this sounds familiar. Mm-mm. And it was like, on Nick. The kids. I think it was Nickelodeon. The kids start slowly realizing that their grandpa actually like fights monsters and ghosts and stuff like that. Mm-mm. It's not ringing a bell. It never. Oh, it starts with an L. Lost. Zach from the editing room. It definitely did not start with an L. The show I was trying to think of is Gravity Falls. Uh, the Lost Airbender. <laughs> the, the Lost Airbender. Dude, The Last Airbender was such a good show. I didn't watch that one. What? <laughs> How would we not watch that? I don't know. Now the thing I'll give you is they need to. Somebody needs to make a like reduced version of it. Okay. I really suggest watching. Last Airbender before you watch any others. Okay. No, I take that back. You still haven't watched The Wire. <laughs> you need to get shit together and watch that. There's too much out there. Yeah, which is why sometimes you have to, like, <clears throat> watch things that have been reviewed already. That's you true. know you're getting good stuff. That's true. <laughs> shit, man, I can't think of it. <laughs> I'll send it to you whenever I think of it. Alright. Alright, good time to end it. I think we uh, pretty much spoiled every show out there yeah. that's worth watching, so um, you're welcome. Also, Sixth Sense, he's dead the whole time. He's <laughs> dead. Uh, and Seven, it's Gwyneth Paltrow's head in a box at the end. The Titanic sinks and Leonardo DiCaprio dies. <laughs> <laughs>